As I journey through this land, I'll be singing as I go, and I will be pointing souls to Calvary, to, to the crimson flow. Well, and me, me arrows pierce my soul from without, within. We're singing now, but my Lord, He just leads me on. First of all, we thank you for another day that it was not promised us. We ask your continued blessings on all of your churches all over the land and country. As we go forward, we ask that you continue to bless and keep us safe. Continue to let the world know that you are still in charge no matter what's going on. We just ask that you continue to keep us, keep our strength. Forgive us all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would, meet me at Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. And we're going to talk on the subject, peace with God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So as we talk about peace with God this morning, uh, let's talk about this pandemic for a few minutes. Uh, this word pandemic means disease that's prevalent over the whole world. And that's what we're dealing with th with this COVID-19. And this is not a new thing. There has always been epidemics and pandemics. If you go back to 1633, smallpox came in with our European settlers and 6,000 Bostonians died from smallpox. And then you fast forward to 1832 to 1866, the cholera virus, and that came in three waves. And of course, New York City is always the first to feel the impact of a pandemic or an epidemic. And I estimated, watch it now, in 30 years, an estimated two to six Americans died per day with that outbreak. Then you fast forward again to uh, 1918 when we had the Spanish flu. 70,000 deaths came before a vaccine was even available. And then we have the flu, influenza virus itself, itself which is still prevalent today. So this pandemic ep epidemic is not a new thing. And studies will show that perhaps we are uh, not as far along as we should be with it. We're behind, whatever the case may be. But pandemics and epidemics are not a new thing. So even in times like this, guess what we can have? Peace 
with God. So we have the ability to have peace of mind and that is peace with God. In the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of an epidemic, as we've gone down the line with some, and there has been many, watch it, God was still on the throne. Amen. That's why we can have peace with him. He has never leaving us. He has never forsaken. Yes, there are casualties with this, but God is still in control. So let's look at point number one coming from verse one. Point number one is going to be the pardon of a peaceful position. Watch it now uh, in verse one. Therefore, being justified by faith. There is there is an excuse we have to have peace of mind because we are in a peaceful position. Verse one, the A part of it says, therefore, being justified by faith. This word justified means you have been cleared of a crime. You are guilty. You've done it. We don't need to argue with God whether or not we are sinful, whether or not we are guilty. We have done wrong. But God, through faith, justifies us. Now this word faith comes from an original Greek word in the context, pistis. And watch what it means. It means from faith to faith. So watch it now. We have been justified by pistis. We have been justified from faith to faith. Well, what does that mean? That means what is that faith that builds our faith? That faith is what Jesus did on the cross. That's what Pistis is talking about. We're justified how? By faith. The faith that Jesus did what he said he did on the cross. He, he justified us. He made us not guilty through his blood. So first of all, being declared not guilty or having a peaceful mind even in the middle of an epidemic we can always go back to our first reference and that's belief on the cross through Jesus Christ because what happens that faith builds our faith now watch it now and this is something to think about pandemic epidemic can take our life but it will not destroy our soul. Ooh, that's a good word right there. So, so our soul, our, our living after we die is not based on what's happening right now. Yes, it's hurtful. Yes, we don't understand. But we always go back to the initial belief that builds our faith in spite of what's going on. I have an excuse. Watch it. The pardon excuse of a peaceful position. I have an excuse to be at peace right now, even though the world is in turmoil and agony. So therefore, we are justified by faith. The belief in what happened on the cross and that faith from the cross builds my everyday faith and that causes me to have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So point number one is a pardon of a peaceful position. Now let's go to point number two. Watch it now. The passage from a peaceful position. I, I have access. I have a way to God because I'm in a peaceful position. Well, let's look at what, what the, the next part of our verse says. It says, by whom also we have access by faith. What? What? That same faith about the cross into this grace wherein we stand. We have access by faith. That means we have a passage to have a peaceful position in the time of a pandemic or an epidemic. So what is access? Access means you have permission to approach. Going back to our first point, our faith is because of what Jesus did on the cross and what Jesus did on the cross is leading us to where we are right now. We have permission to go to God and have some peace. So watch it now. We were brought into this peaceful state because we're saved by what Jesus did on the cross. So we have access into this state of being saved right now, even in the middle of what's going on. See, that's why I'm at peace. Not only am I going to be saved, but in the middle of turmoil and agony, guess what? I'm saved right now. Even though things are out of control, that's why we can be at peace. So we were brought into this peaceful position by Jesus Christ. Watch this. We also have favor in this state. That's why I'm in a peaceful position, because being brought here gives me favor. Now, favor is not fair. 
Yeah, so what is, the, what is the imagery of favor not being fair? If you have bad credit and you still get approved for the loan, somebody needs to say amen right. somewhere around here. Yeah. <laughs> I know I ain't the only one that can say amen to that one. <laughs> but that's the, that's the image of favor not being fair. Now, now, now watch it now. I do believe that God will pull certain ones up out of certain situations and others he may not. But that's not the favor that the context is talking about. Let's just go through the text. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, I have access. So I have peace because I'm in a peaceful state. And now I have favor because of what Jesus did on the cross. What does that mean? The favor is that I am saved when I shouldn't be saved. That's a good point right there. So that's the favor. It's not that the favor that God gives you something in the material and doesn't give it to someone else. No, the favor is that God gives this to you even when you don't deserve it. Right. That's the favor. So watch it now. In the middle of pandemic, in the middle of an epidemic, I can be at peace because I have access to God. I have a passage and I have favor because I'm saved when I shouldn't even be saved. And then watch this, we have a sure foundation and we don't have to labor long with that. We know our foundation is sure because our foundation is who? Jesus Christ. So point number one, we see the pardon or excuse of a peaceful position. Point number two, we see the passage or access from a peaceful position. And finally, point number three, the passion or desire of a peaceful position. Let's look at what the latter part of verse number two says. It says, and rejoice in hope Man. of the glory of God. Right. That's beautiful right there. Once you think about what Jesus did on the cross, and, and I know, I, I, I know that we're fearful. I understand that. I, I'm, I've, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I don't even know anyone right now who has seen anything like this in their life. So, so I understand that we're fearful and I understand that we have faith, but faith doesn't mean that you're not fearful, fearful. Watch it. Faith actually is being discouraged, but still facing it with courage. All right. That's what faith is. So, so I, I'll be the first to say, yes, I'm fearful. I want to know what's going on in the future. I, I want to know that my job is still going to bring in funds so I don't have to go on an unwanted sabbatical. So yes, I am fearful. But, but how do I remain hopeful and courageous in fear? Watch it. Understanding what hope is. Well, hope is what? A confident expectation of salvation. That's what that word hope means, coming from an original Greek word in verse 2. It means confident expectation of salvation. So despite what's going on, despite what sickness takes my body, despite what derails me, despite uh, me having to sit down and be on a sabbatical from work or whatever the case may be, whatever this pandemic epidemic brings, you still have hope in the future. Why? Because that is not going to affect what Jesus did on the cross and helps us access salvation. So hope is a confident expectation of what God is going to bring. And what is it? It's hope in the process. That's two things. Hope in the process. The process is what Christ went through on the cross, which is showing that he'll never leave us. It doesn't matter what's going on. And the second part of that process is what Christ did on the cross helps us live every single day of our lives. Yes, we're fearful, but we keep on going because hope says get up. Love some more and, and watch it. I, I know that we are practicing social distancing and I'm I'm all for that. I'm all for that. But but perhaps we need to call it care distancing or love distancing. Why? Because I care enough about you not to be touching all on you. Coughing all on you and all this other stuff. So listen. I understand all of that is going on, but, but the point still remains the same, that God is in control. God has already taken care of us. He will never leave us. He won't forsake us. And we can still have hope, Man, even right. in the middle of turmoil and agony. So I pray that this was a blessing to you. Let's, let's talk to the Lord right now. Father, we love you. We honor you. We respect you. And we thank you. 
infuse us with what we heard today and keep us being hopeful even in the middle of fear. We love you and we bless your name. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. There's a fountain free, tis for you and let us haste, oh haste to is bring, and tis a fountain. opportunity as well to pray to uh, ask the saints to keep these uh, saints in your prayers this week and continue to uh, call them if the opportunity to permit you and also uh, you know sister Johnny sister Johnny lost her sister a couple of days ago and her name is uh, Marie Bradley so if you get a chance just give Johnny and sister Johnny a call and Continue to cover her the best way you can. And keep Sister Alexander in your prayers as well. You know, she had surgery last week and we talked and she was in a lot of pain. And I don't think I could tell her, Sister, take your medication because that medicine case you go ahead with. Yeah. And so we talked and laughed about that for a while. And uh, and also, um, you know, um, AJ and Liv have been a little sick as well. And so, uh, and then just continue to pray, pray for Austin as well. And Brother Pouncer, you know, he's a hard fight soldier over there. So he needs your prayers as well to continue to, to do the thing that he's doing for the family and for the church family. And he's doing a lot of stuff here for us. And we commend the brother for that. And also, um, I will uh, just want to uh, ask, let each of us continue to pray and ask God to cover us during these times of this uh, virus. And so we must always know that God is the God that's going to take care of us. And through prayer, we will have peace with God. And at this time, we're going to ask Brother Wilburn to run the prayer for us. I'd like to read from 2 Chronicles 7 verses 13, 14, and 15. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal the land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Let us bow. Father, we thank you today for this day and follow the wonderful blessings that you have blessed us. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, by word, thought, or deed, or omission, or commission, anything that will hinder this prayer from being heard. 
God will come to you on behalf of the world. The world is suffering from this pandemic and, and God, we ask that we may continue to trust in you. And God, we know that you are refuge in the midst of our storms. And God, may America realize, God, that you are God and that your will must be done. We pray for this church and we pray for all churches that stand open. And Lord, we ask that you would bless us according to your will and your way. Continue to guide us. Continue, God, to be the great healer. And we know, God, that with you all things are possible. We ask this in the name and will and power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're down to another part of our service, which is communion, to commemorate the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We find in Acts 20, verse 7, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued speech until midnight. Let us give thanks. Most gracious Father, we are so thankful for this opportunity to be able to commune. Father, we pray for the, the bread that represents your body and the cup that represents your blood. We pray that we can take it in a fashion that's well-pleasing in your sight. It is in Christ's name I pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. We're down to another part of our service, which is giving. We find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. And up on the first day of the week, let one of you lay by in the store, that God had prospered there be no gathering when I come. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, which art in heaven, so again we are thankful to be able to give back to you. We pray, Father, that the money will be used to build our kingdom. It's in Christ's name I pray and ask it all. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for this brief worship. We pray that you will continue to bless the saints here that worship at this place.